transformation matrix. So the first iteration of this presentation had a lot of fun math facts and theory. And then a friend said to me, why would anyone need to know that? And I thought, that's a good point. So now this is a presentation about things you don't need to know. So the core animation transformation uh, object um, may seem daunting and confusing, especially when it comes with such an exotic initializer. But all it really is is a four by four matrix, the values of which represent the transformation of a views layer in a 3D space. But you don't really need to know that because the easiest way to get up and running with a transform is just to use the identity matrix and its default values. And if you wanted to do a translation, so move an object from point A to B, you could modify these three values, but you don't really need to know that because core animation provides helper functions that both let you make a brand new transform with a translation or apply translation to an existing transform. Similarly, for rotation, you could directly modify these nine values. This is where the fun math came in because it was all sine and cosine, but you don't really need to know that. So, this is an example of a rotation around the x-axis with r being the angle of rotation in radians. Uh, and the same thing for scale. I think you know what I'm about to say. You don't really need to know that because core animation has helper functions for this. So when would you need to know this then? One example would be shear. Um, another word for that is slant or skew. Um, for some reason, core animation does not have helper functions for this, uh, but it uses the same nine values as rotation, except for you do get to do some math, and this is where tangents come in, as opposed to sine and cosine. So this, for instance, is what a slant looks like along the x-axis with respect to y. Uh, and another instance when you would need to know this is if you want to do a projective transformation. And a projective transformation is one in which there's a depth component, and it's in 3D space, and you would use this mysterious fourth column or more typically, just the M34 value, which is uh, depth in the Z direction. So let's put it all together. This is la pièce de résistance, as they say here. Um, can I please have a show of hands of who here uses Instagram? Okay, now keep your hand up, keep your hands up. Keep your hand up if you are absolutely obsessed with it and it's taken over your life and it's become a big problem. Okay, so maybe there's a couple people. Thank you for the honesty. These will be the only people who will have discovered this feature. But Instagram allows you to adjust perspective on your photos. So, and we're going to try to recreate the perspective shift vertically. And we're only gonna focus on the part where the bottom comes forward and you can extrapolate the solution to the top coming forward. So first thing we'll need to do is modify the anchor point because the, trans, uh, the um, animation is not happening around the middle. It's happening a little bit higher than that. Then we'll need to adjust the perspective because this is happening in depth with, some, uh, with a Z component. Uh, the main thing we're seeing here is the rotation around the x-axis. And, uh, and lastly, we'll need to scale because um, the part that goes back then fills up the whole screen. So the first thing we'll need to do is modify the anchor. And you can see here that the Y is a little bit higher than the origin. Uh, the second thing we'll need to do here is the perspective. So this is what the, where that mysterious M34 comes in. And then we're going to make a rotation. Um, so in Instagram, they're doing this on a gesture, but uh, I just put in a value that looked okay in an animation. And lastly, we apply the scale. Once again, I didn't do any math like they have. I've just put in some values that look good, and I made the whole thing animate, and I'm not going to show you animation code. Um, and lastly, we add it to the layer. So we use one layer for the depth and another layer for, the other, um, for all the other um, transforms. So, and this is the result we have. It's pretty close. You know, maybe some values need tweaking and we also need to crop the top and the bottom to make it square. But other than that, it's pretty good. Uh, and so that's it. These are all the things you do and do not need to know about the transformation matrix.